No movie in modern times is produced without VFX. Most of the time, if you can't see any VFX or CGI in a movie, it's simply because it's done so well, it's unnoticeable. And that's the goal of VFX, to blend what is digitally made into the real world without drawing attention to itself. When done right, it goes unnoticed, and when done wrong, it's all you see. VFX can be a simple sky replacement or as complex as adding large monsters in a scene. Before Blender, to accomplish this, you would have to be a large studio or subscribe to expensive software like Houdini and Maya. But since Blender 2.5, Blender has become a great contender for VFX production. While Blender is a powerful VFX tool, you still need to know the right tools and extensions to use to get it right. Remember, VFX when done right should go unnoticed unless of course you're featuring an unmistakable giant spaceship or monster rampaging through a city. So how would you go about adding a monster like that in a city? The starting point would be to track your footage with the Blender motion tracking tools, but to keep things simple, let's just use an image instead of a video. When working on images, you still need to match the camera used to capture the image like you would with a video. Though images are way simpler, Blender comes with motion tracking tools built in, but it does not come with any camera matching tools for still images. For that, we will have to use a standalone program called Elfspy. Elfspy is free to download and to use. While Elfspy is a great tool for matching your camera, you don't get the convenience of working inside Blender. For that option, Perspective Plotter is a more powerful option with features like dynamic camera matching, scene scaling, and camera target locations. After matching your camera, the next step is to add your monster into the scene. If you don't have any monster, VFX Grace has the best looking models on the market and Diffuse Studios has just released this new pack of models at the Blender market in case you just want to add a bunch of people. To make the models fit perfectly into your scene, you need them to cast shadows onto objects in your original image. This could be a nearby building or the ground. To do this, Blender gives you the shadow catcher. This is any renderable object like meshes, curves, volumes, or even particles that do not show up in the final render, but shadows casted on them show. To set any object into a shadow catcher, select the object, go to the properties, visibility, mask, and then shadow catcher. A shadow catcher by itself is not going to be enough to sell realism. You need your monster to interact with its surrounding, for example, by adding damage to its surrounding, like buildings or even the ground. Some basic understanding of the built-in cell fracture add-on is going to help you tremendously to add damage or break apart objects. If you mix that with geometry nodes, then the sky is the limit. I have some tutorials to get you started with that. Or if you need detailed damage, quick, the realistic internal damage extension will give you that in just a few clicks. If you are adding smaller objects into your scene at close range, surface details are going to be the key to blend your digital additions into reality. Imperfections can be made by adding a grunge texture into the roughness of your material. The key is finding the right grunge map with high enough resolution. In case you can't find anything you're looking for, B Production just released a set of 200 high resolution 4K textures of different grunge maps from fingerprints, dirt, grunge, scratches, water damage, and more. When you are done with setting up the background, you can set up the lighting to match with the background. Since there are so many things that can affect lighting, like weather, cloud cover, season, or the environment, you will have to experiment to see what works with your image. Blender comes with a built-in sky system, but its main limitation is that it does not come with clouds to mimic the different sky conditions. If you need a more powerful alternative, you can try the True Sky extension. It gives you dynamic skies and lighting that is going to match nearly every scenario you might encounter. After lighting, you can move on to color grading. This will help you blend the different parts together. Blender comes with a powerful compositor and now supports cryptomat and different masking features like object index, material index, color, and more. The compositor can be challenging to learn, so if you want something quick, the Compositor Pro extension gives you a set of pre-made effects to throw onto your render for the added professional touch. The compositor can also do things like green screen removal and rotoscoping. To take the effects to another level, you can add weather effects like snow, rain, wind, and more to elevate your render to the next level. This can be easily done with the built-in particle system. All you need to make sure is that your footage is well tracked or camera matched if you're using an image, and that you have proxy objects to act as collider objects. For example, if you want rain to fall onto the ground, you need to create an object to match the shape of your ground or surrounding buildings, where you want the weather elements to bounce on. If you don't want to do this by yourself, the weather effects extension comes with a variety of weather effects, from snow, 
wind, rain, and more. Those were some Blender VFX tools, both built-in and extensions to help you with your VFX journey. Thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next video.